Okay, welcome. So this is uh, chapter six, uh, and we are going to have a look at some interesting uh, things about uh, how to make um, plots. Where is it? Okay. Um, how to make plots uh, with uh, with R. Okay, so I'm going to meet this. So we have, uh, uh, so basically, if you can see uh, the chapter is this one here. This is the version of the chapter, uh, the book uh, down version of the chapter. So it starts with, um, uh some basic graphs uh and then um so talks a bit uh of, about the uh, caveat of making um a picture of your data uh and uh, mention that you don't need to panic but that you need to uh focus on 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 the purpose of your analysis to uh, grab the best things of your data and make a visualization and then play with it. Uh, there are different types of uh, graphs that can be done, such as histogram, stem, and leaf plots, which are very new to me. So that, that is something that was new. Uh, box plots, uh, scatter plots, bar graphs, and then how to save uh, um, uh, the, the plot that you've done as a P, uh, PNG or JPEG, so as a file that you can share. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, so this is done. I'm, I've made the the notes. So I don't know if you like to uh, to do that as well with your chapter. If you need any help, just uh, let me know. So basically, the learning objectives of this chapter are uh, how to make exploratory data analysis, a uh, basic uh, mention of how to use the plot function, which is a very um, extended um, section in the chapter, uh, and then use the, G the grammar of graphics, uh, so the ggplot2 package for making uh, the, the, the plots. So as a very short, brief overview, exploratory data analysis is one of the most important parts of the data analysis. And the book expands on using the BASAR uh, plot function for data visualization. Here we have a look at how to make the same plots with ggplot2 package and use uh, the tidyverse syntax. So uh, this is nice. This this is a very, very interesting uh, project, which I've spent some time on it. Uh, and if you like, uh, we can even have a look at it. So this is John Snow. Yeah, tell me. No, yeah, 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 I'm hearing. Yeah, uh, no. You it is, is in the GitHub. It's ready. I, yeah. I mean, your that notes are already in the GitHub. Um, uh, no, no, I, I, di I didn't push these notes yet. Uh, I'll, I'll push it just uh, at the end of this, um, uh, uh, this session. Um, but the, the structure is already there, and you um, can fork the, the repo as I did it. So this is the book club, the original one. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want I put um, I put the link uh, so we can uh, manage it in uh, Slack. Uh, I can put this uh, uh, in the chat as Great. well. Uh, and so what I did it is basically a fort. Uh, I fork this um, uh, repository. Uh, and then uh, uh, create uh, a new uh, project. You know how to do it. You know, um, you create a new project and then uh, select a version control, then Git. And then here you pass uh, the 
URL that you fork it. This is mm. your, your okay. yeah. You pass this URL, um, uh, and you in here, and then you select like if you do this, and then you select this. Uh, it paste it out automatically in here. Then you select the subdirectory and create a project. Okay. So once it's done, uh, what you find is, uh, okay, this is my Jon Snow project uh, and I have all the things in here. Uh, mm -hmm. So then you find all those things there right. once you made a new project. Uh, this is chapter six. So we need, we don't have this previous chapter, but we are going to maybe add it later or for the future mm -hmm. course. So, and then I'll push this uh, when at the end of the meeting. So, okay. yeah. So basically what's happened, uh, let's go back to my uh, John Snow. Okay, so uh, which is there? Uh, what's happened here with uh, John Snow? So I used, um basically this uh, is a sort of basic plot function okay so which is already being customized to visualize this um the map of john snow what is john snow uh i didn't uh say much but uh, uh john snow it's basically um um, um Mm, so a doctor uh, in the early uh, 90s, uh, 1900, and when, when there was this great outbreak of cholera in London. So I'm sure you know about that. Uh, and so this doctor, what, what did it to investigate the cause of cholera, this, uh, um, this outbreak of cholera, uh, was to make a map, okay? Uh, it took, uh, you cannot see it properly. Maybe you can see better here. So basically, as you can see, th this is very like Baker Street. So the, the very um, central London in the uh, early 1900s. Uh, and so he basically went in, into each uh, house and ask if they had uh, cholera or, or and and so if there were deaths and everything uh, both from the register and uh, went in, uh, going uh, in each house and ask so he basically put a dot uh, on each location so he could visualize where the deaths uh, happened uh, at the same time he realized that um, those that were uh, located around uh, the water pumps, okay, especially one water pump, this one here, okay. So and as well, he's he put uh, some uh, reference where the, the these water pumps were located, uh, and so uh, finally he concluded that this uh, water pump was causing. Uh, the Meyer um, uh, outbreak, so the Meyer expansion of this infection, and so they uh, lock it up, and, and uh, slowly the infection went down. Okay, so now uh, this is a, a very nice uh, project to to go through both. Uh, sorry about that. Um, uh, see uh, how the uh, to make a map, uh, how to plot these these things here. It cannot be okay. Now it's slightly back. So if you install and load this East data package, uh, this package here contains uh, different informations about. Um, I don't know how to do that. I'll do this. Okay. So basically contains a data set from the 
uh, history of statistics and data visualization, which contains some, some uh, um, other data, data sets included uh, things about John Snow map. On the 1854, exactly, Londo Colira outbreak. Okay, and so if you use that, such as the same as with the plot function, and you use this snow map, for example, you, oops. you can see that it plots uh, the map automatically uh, and all that. Obviously, this function can customize and you can do uh, many things with it. Otherwise, you can even load the data. For example, this is uh, snow death data, and you have the number of cases and the location, X and Y, longitude and latitude. So you can even put this on a data frame and plot it, uh, for example, if we do the, this, okay. Um, like here, okay, so we have this uh, data. If we do this um, and see if this is a, Data, it's already a data frame. So we can use ggplot. Uh, we see that is uh, uh, x and y. And we do a simple geom point. OK, so you can see that you, these are the locations. OK, this is, um, we can. Uh, um, this is a very simple scatter, type of scatter plot. Then you can customize it uh, differently. At the same time, we go through that. At the same time, you have the streets, okay? As well, you have uh, the streets and the street uh, and the number. So um, you can do different things uh, uh, with these things. You can even like group uh, by uh, streets uh, and do um simple lines but in this case uh, the plot function is used on the um, on the um, uh, snow depths longitude and latitude then the points are in red at the same time he uses the streets uh, and uh, set it as a factor and so then it uses this function invisible, then L apply. And so basically it's able to replicate the segments uh, of the streets, which is very interesting. Don't you find it interesting? Yeah? Yeah, I, I, I didn't know that function invisible. Exactly, exactly. In fact, me, me, me other. Um, yeah, so we can even see, what is this? from the da his data package or is a is a R base function? Uh, this is base function and it returns a temporary invisible copy of an object. Okay, it's a primitive function, so very ba uh, so the very structure of all other functions. So it is more, most likely used in other functions. <coughs> Uh, but in this case, uh, what does is basically replicating um, this uh, mapping function, uh, which takes all the information from the streets uh, and the mm, setting uh, it as a factor. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that that's quite quite interesting. So um, we can go back to to there. More about uh, John Snow is, um, uh, for example, uh, this is my uh, project. So if you basically you can download all the contents about John Snow. Uh, specifications. So this is a very thorough uh, project which is done. So basically, uh, if you're interested in this, I can uh, share that with you. 
So you can download this, uh, unzip the files, and then you find uh, all the, uh, as you can see, the shapes files. Uh, um, the uh, different images uh, that are um, inside this folder. Uh, and then, as you can see, this is all uh, the things that are inside. There are, there are the deaths, the, uh, the, the location of the pumps, and some other uh, dot .tif information. The, these TIFs are uh, type of images for uh, raster data. So what do you, you might want to do? Uh, it's basically um, go to the Colira deaths, which is this, and it contains different files. They are six type of files, and uh, you can use this OGR function, read OGR function, which reads just the shape file, okay? But it requires all six uh, files within a folder, okay? So you point this into the folder, use this uh, uh, from RGDAL, uh, and uh, this is there for that and for pumps. So in a way that you have uh, um, uh, basically it, it reads uh, what's inside and select the shapes files. Then if you have a look at uh, one of these um, uh, things with a uh, hat, you have more information about it, such as the box, the BB box, which contains like the maximum and the minimum longitude and latitude to build a box where your data are located. And so you might want to select the goals, set up uh, a data frame, and then um, you can use it to... For example, as it is a raster file, no, a shape file. Uh, okay. We're, we're seeing the contents with, with um, by using this at symbol, right? Yeah, this app symbol is basically um, it's, it's, one. It's similar to the dollar symbol when we have a list, right? Exactly. Okay. But um, because in our, um, I don't know if you, there are um, a structure of functions which are uh, grouped within. Um, two or three ty different types, such as S3, S4, or R6, okay? They are such as uh, containers, which have their um, own syntax uh, to use. And you can choose, when, when you develop a code, you can uh, or make a function or do a larger project to use whether one of the other types, okay? And then it's, a, it's a basically, uh, uh, structure foundation uh, for, for develop, developing code in R. In this case, this at, it belongs to, um, oops, um, I don't know if I can see, to an S4 type of data. Um, okay, this is uh, um, uh, special points data frame and that's okay but uh, uh, it's um, S4. So if you do R4, um, you, you, you search it, you find it. Okay, um, okay. Um, and so you can select it just at the same with the dollar, but now we use the art because it is, it's this type of structure um, of uh, setting up data. And so we can select, for example, the goals, and then uh, put them together, both the deaths, the coordinates of the deaths and the pumps. And then uh, we can create a type. So we can define the number of deaths that effectively appeared 
because you know you have points as uh, some some uh, uh, um, most of them uh, are uh, that's and the other one are pumps. Okay, so this way it's a uh, a mix uh, use of base R. Why is not? Uh, Okay. And so with this um, data here, which is now this way, you have the longitude and the latitude for both. Okay. If, if I see count type, you can see that we have that and the pumps, locations. Okay. Then I can use the ggplot function to plot it. And I specify the color type so that I can see where are the pumps and where are the deaths. So basically he realized that this pump, water pump, was the main um, uh, cause of um, this cholera infection sponge. Okay, so... Uh, for now, we had a look at a, a quickly um, introduction of how to visualize uh, data. In this chapter, they use they make examples with the Fibonacci sequence and other uh, data sets, which you can find in the uh, in in the, here. Data sets. This is the, the website. If you click on that, it will uh, download uh, the, uh, all the data sets. In fact, for now, I put them uh, inside data here. Okay, so these are all the, the data sets uh, available. And we are going to use this um, AFL small uh, and other type of this, such as parenthood here, this data. Um, in the, they made a simple example with the Fibonacci and the plot function, so you just can list, you don't need a data frame with the plot function. And in the chapter, if you are interested in base R plot function, you find, uh, um, so a very uh, extensive uh, explanation uh, on how to use it. But uh, as I said, I found, uh, now I'm a bit little more practice with the grammar of graphic, the ggplot function uses with the tidyverse syntax. So we are going through that. Mm -hmm. uh, so you need to uh, load the library uh, for the book. Uh, and um, even if this function is nice, so basically shows you what's in the environment what data sets are loaded in the environment. Uh, first things we load this AFL small. And if we do who, we can see that inside it contains other uh, data sets, other information such as the finalists or, and the margins. If we have a look at the margins, these are, we have some, some uh, uh, information. And uh, the first things that they uh, like you to, uh, to see that you can make um, an histogram. Okay, an histogram uh, is a sort of bar plot. Okay, but it contains the frequencies. So instead of a bad plot, you can plot it with two different data, not necessarily the frequencies uh, of, the, uh, uh, of one of the two. Uh, the histogram uh, uh, um, requires just one element. 
which can be X or Y, but just one. And then you, you can plot the histogram, um, which basically what does is counting uh, each uh, the frequency of each element of the uh, vector that you provided. Uh, have you got any question about histograms that we can go through? Uh, mm, no, anything? not really. I'm okay. Anything that you want to know, like such as the bing width or uh, the color, or like we can fill it uh, with a different color? No, I'm familiar with 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 that about customizing the okay so the... in this case we, in this case our data frame uh, um, doesn't uh, provide other information so we we cannot like such as coloring uh, the bars differently uh, because we have just the match uh, then an interesting uh, new things that I didn't know is this stem function. Did you know about that? No, not really. It's from the R base. It's an R base function. Yeah, it is an R base function. But basically, this this function is uh, is from graphics, but it's um, uh, within the uh, the base packages. Um, so you don't need to load anything. Uh, you find it there. Uh, and um, produces a stem and leaf plot of some vector that you provide. So the parameter scale can be used to expand the scale of the plot. For example, so if we use this thing, Um, so I haven't specified X, but if I, what if I use, the Fibonacci, um, I haven't tried, I don't know, I'm, I'm just uh, having a look at this, so I call it EX. So basically, one, one, two, three, one, one, two, three. Um, and then 58 and three and one is so um, this is a bit like uh, let's have a look at this uh, it's very new to me um, we have this island which is Africa, Antarctica and some other informations we can use it inside the stem function and so, uh, or we do the log and basically summarize the information um, this way. Um, in the uh, chapter, well, this one here. This stem and leaf plot, basically, um, this is uh, it's an alternative, um, and um, it's an approximation of the things. But as you can see, you have some information. It shows which one is the maximum value. You can uh, see. These things, but it's not actually a plot. You know, it's not a plot. It's a, um, like summarizing information. Uh, you can visualize some summary of the information of your data. Um, the value of the uh, at the left of the bar, this one here, are the stems, and the value to, uh, to the right are the leaves. 
you might want to use like to make um, other type of plots. Um, and so it, it might look as an histogram, say just rotated by 90 degrees. Um, so this is, uh, I don't know if you have any questions you want to. But the, yeah. the numbers on the right, I mean, yeah. they, are, they are the categories, right? Let's say, or the, um, the they are the equivalent to the x mm -hmm. uh, x axis values in a histogram, yeah. while the while the leaves I, the leaves are I am confused. What is that? Is then is the number of observations not okay? This one here. Uh, okay, these are these ten. Yeah, this one uh, on the on the left. On the right, we have the leaf. So the stems most probably um, so are the nodes, and then the leaves are uh, the information that belongs to to that node. Um, I don't know what's happened if I change this. Um, like to 30. Mm. But let me. So something changes if I change the width, which is the desired width of the plot. Uh, Okay, I can customize the scale with this control, the plot length. And the atom is a tolerance. So basically it's, um, I think you can uh, use it for uh, visualizing some type of information such as, uh, um, such as this one here. Quite interesting. So, for example, this island. Which is this? It's not. Uh, uh, it's numeric. Uh, if we put it as a data frame. We have this information. So these are the islands, and we have the information. Where the names gone? Ah, uh, because we have the column names. Okay, so we can do the island and the row names, maybe. So then you can need to, in this case, transform this uh, data set. Okay, these are the names. I do this. We have a nice little frame like this, mm -hmm. these are the, maybe, um, values, and these are the island, like this. And, mm, okay. Uh, yeah, that's okay, but, uh, so when you use the stem, this is what is produced with this, uh, value here so basically summarize put together some some numbers one one uh, yeah it's interesting but 
Yeah. I think a little bit complicated to. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm. I'm sure you can use it if you need it. Um, to summarize some some information, you can even have a look at the uh, on Google. Because there's not much information in the chapter. It says it's it is it's like an Instagram or a bar plot just rotated of ninety degrees. But it's very new to me. Yeah, yeah, for me also. Uh, how do you explain stem and leaf plot? It's a, a diagram, special table when uh, where each data value is split into a stem. Maybe we can. Okay. Quite slow. Let's see Wikipedia. So, uh, is a device for presenting quantitative data in a graphical format. Similar to a histogram to assist in visualizing the shape of a distribution. Okay. So if I have a look at the uh, this island things. Okay. If I save this as a yeah. and make a plot. What was in there? Um, just the values. Okay. What if I do oh, oh. Flip. my computer is uh, not responding. <laughs> oh, flip. No. Okay. Board. Okay. You can even reverse the axis. <laughs> okay. Okay, so this is what is uh, this information. So lots of zeros. So it's a sort of a uh, uh, quick way to visualize the distribution of information in terms of numbers, and that this shows the numbers. And this is the best way I can <laughs> can tell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay, so this, this was new. Then we have the box plots. So the box plots, uh, and then we go back to uh, bar plots at the very end of the chapter. So here we use this um, data set margins that we used uh, previously. 
Uh, if we do a quick summary, we see that we have like the median is 30, the mean is 35.30, so first and um, third quartile, the minimum and the maximum. And so we can summarize and visualize this information with a box plot. And so we do this with geom box plot. Mm, here is a quick explanation of what is uh, our, what, what information you can retrieve from a box plot. So I'm sure you know the minimum, the maximum, the median, and the, the second and the third percentile. Then uh, if we load this other uh, data set, uh, AFL small two, which contains, uh, now they are all mixed up, but some other information, such as AFL2. Okay, and we, if we have a look at this AFL2, we have the margin and the year. So now we can do the same plot as before, but group it by year uh, this way. So in the eyes, we specify the X and the Y, and then group it by year, we can visualize different, uh, so how this um, unified box plot uh, can differ within different years. Okay. So this dot, yeah. I don't know if you have any questions uh, or you want to do uh, something. Yeah. The other day, I wanted to sort the box plot. I mean, the individual bo box plot by um, descendant order. I mean, the yeah. highest. I mean, the highest mean, the highest val mean value at the um, very beginning. Yeah, um, but yeah, the rest. I yeah, found. There, yeah. That very difficult. I can't remember now how how I done that, but I I remember I found it very difficult. I think at the end I first um convert them co convert them to factors and order them as levels. Mm. But I don't know. Do, do you know a more efficient way to do that? No, no. That that's the way. That's the way. But here we've got uh, years. So how yeah, do you... right. But let, let, let's pretend that the years are not years, but they're just labels of something. We can uh, reorder them by like doing fact reorder year and margin. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Um, ah, but you're doing that within the same uh, A's. Within the same, the same, oh, how do I pronounce it? Okay. Yeah. Now we have yeah, a you, fact, yeah? Yeah, you are, you are using factor reorder within the AES argument. The highest, or, or the highest you put an, a minus here, mm -hmm. if you do the highest. But, uh, uh, okay, you see? Yeah. This is ordered by the medium level. Uh, now we pretend that the year uh, it's uh, doesn't matter the order of the year, but what matters is the uh, so then you can see that the lowest is two thousand seven, maybe I don't know if I do this. Very huge. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, can you see it? Why mm -hmm. dark things so that I understand? Okay. So it doesn't matter what is the, you cannot see, but anyway, then you, you can uh, like adjust these things differently. If you want to maybe just uh, show just a few, okay, now you can see. So for example, this way, if it doesn't matter the timeline of the year, you can see that the lowest, it's 2000. So is that right? Right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. We can even draw a line for the medium level, the mean level. Uh, let's have a look if we can do it. Like such a geom uh, H line. And then we do IS Y inter. And the mean of the margin. No. Doesn't. No. X. Because. Why do you do that? Or maybe, maybe uh, you need the equal. I mean, G. Ah, yes, yes. Yourself equal. Yeah. Why it doesn't. Ah, yes. Why it doesn't. Okay, so this is the line. Let's put it. Okay, so we can see that those ones are, all of them are below the, the over mean value. But the most, uh, the lowest is 2007. Is that what we wanted? Maybe? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> Okay, now we have the years here. And that's that's wrong. Okay, so that's how to do that. But in case, so here you have the outliers. But you do with this factory order. If you want to do with the from the highest to the lowest. Yeah, I did it similar, but in a separate uh, code. I mean, I I didn't use this function, uh, factor reorder. I think I use as factor in a separate uh, chunk or in a separate code. Yeah, and right. I, I had to do that as well. Because I, um, I, if I don't do this, it doesn't work. All right. You see? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, then scatter plots, we have seen quite a few of them. So in this case, we use the parent to the data. Uh, and this, uh, they have slip for done, baby, and gramp, and the uh, days. Uh, and so they plot the slip uh, for done. Uh, on the x-axis and the gramp. So how much done is slipping and how much is gramp because of so of slipping. So if it slips more, it's less grumpy. <laughs> this grumpy. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I remember the um the data. Was, yeah. I mean I, I remember from, it was from the chapter three, I think. It was the idea was that 
Dan has a, ba has, so has a baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, if if the baby uh, wake up a lot of times during the night, he like wake up so grumpy. Makes sense, makes sense. And then uh, you can even like do uh, draw a line, which uh, like summarizing the trend of the data. Uh, mm -hmm. easily with a geom smooth if you want to specify the LM function it does it, it draws a straight line so a linear basically plots a linear model on this data calculating the mean of the values and then uh, we can even customize these things I like that uh, if I do shape equals 21 and then stroke 0.5 and then I can fill it to pink. Which I like, I like these things. Mm -hmm. uh, then you can uh, adjust the theme. You can do use a, uh, another package which you do. Like five. It doesn't work. So you can customize the things. I didn't know that package, GG themes. Okay, yeah, there, there's quite a few. Another one that I like is TV. Um, TV. TV. Teams. We have other. Oh, my God. Teams. For example. Mm -hmm. have quite, there, there's quite a, quite a few yeah and then if you do this like the tab uh, it lists all the things that you can customize with mm, all the things that the like the regular theme yeah function includes yeah because okay. for example some some uh these are ggplot extensions packages uh i should you You go here, you do you Google ggplot extensions. Uh, and so you have a gallery. Um, Yeah, you can select if you want to crown only or not. And so you have all, all the packages for uh, uh, data visualization with the most interesting different type of plots, which is, this is very nice. Yeah. Uh, and as well as uh, some, some uh, uh, team customizations. There's many. Well, there's yeah. a, some uh, like nice thing there. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Uh, okay. And so they, they're all uh, very useful, interesting. So for example, you can the box plots with specifications and many things. Okay. okay. Yeah. So what the, oh no. Okay, so so this is done. Uh, finally, uh, if we have a look, I don't know why they uh, they now have a look at the correlation function of this parent to the data set. Uh, and so we see 
um, we can visualize the information of the correlation with the pairs function. And so you can see each uh, pair, how they are uh, basically trending each other. The relationship, they are linear or not correlated, but negative correlated, not correlated, and so on. And then uh, you can even select just some of them with this formula. If you, if you set in the pairs function a formula, and uh, you might don't want all this information, but just uh, slip, uh, done slip, baby slip, done gramp, you can do that this way, which is, I find, very useful. Mm -hmm. Uh, as well, you can, there's many others way to visualize correlation. But, yeah. Uh, and then we go back to the bar graphs, which is uh, visual, visual, visualized with the AFL finalist data set. So, for example, with tabulate, you have just the, the frequencies which is the same thing with count, okay? But you need to put in a data frame, otherwise it doesn't work. So basically this is the same. We have the finalists and the, and the counts. And then we can visualize them with a geom call specifying both of them, X and Y. Yeah. Then mm -hmm. you can customize these things with the angle in the team or turning around, uh, putting on the y-axis and then factory order uh, the bars. So you can see the G long uh, as a highest frequencies then Fremantle, for example. Yeah. And here I didn't know, I didn't have to specify that this one here has to be a factor. Had to be a factor. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Because it already was a factor. <laughs> because it already was a factor. You need to specify it's a factor. So conclusion, more feature can be specified with the team or GGBot extension teams, the packages. Uh, and then you can save uh, files. So you, do you know how to save um, a plot? Yeah, I always use the save function for okay. saving my, my plots. Yeah. Uh, even do you know there's like alternative functions for Plotting, yeah. customizing the the size of the plot, the resolution. Because yeah. I, I only use ggsave all the time, but I, even I have not explored alternative functions. ggsave, uh, you can use ggsave, or otherwise there is the raj. Uh, raj uh, package. Uh, and you use this edge PNG, doesn't work. PNG function. This one here, so basically it does the same thing, but uh, you need to specify the file name as in the uh, GG safe but basically it works like this you have uh, you need to wrap the plot so you have mm -hmm. here you can have a GG plot as well eh? it's not necessarily um, base R you can have a GG plot here and you wrap it between these two so add PNG mm -hmm. and the name of the file and then devop this is nice uh, because it uses um, um, 
uh, nice graphics. Uh, um, what I do usually for customizing a plot, uh, it's using the co-plot uh, package. Doesn't work. Um, That's okay. Well, co plot. Okay. Okay, and so basically here you put your uh, ggplot and then you can it basically frame your plot and then you can add more plots inside and they are stay there. Then you customize them. Uh, you see, you have a ggplot and then you put it inside ggdraw and then you can add things and you can add it's a syntax. I find it very useful. You can add images, draw images, draw labels, draw whatever you like. And then you set the scale because you can scale them. Uh, and they are basically framed. And then you save it or with Raj or with ggsave. Okay. Yeah, put end. 